All right, today I have a TV. It's a 50 inch Hisense Roku TV. The model is a 50R70, 50 for 50 inch. And as you can see, that is what it's doing. It is constantly rebooting or cycling the Hisense logo on and off. Now, if you can remember, I did a video on a similar TV doing the same thing and uh, I showed you that there is a actual button on the side of the TV by the jacks a reset button and you just hold that button in or and the TV will be okay but I got a lot of comments telling me that they tried the button and it did not work it was still doing the same thing after you hold the button in for about 15 seconds you know plug the TV in and then once it comes on it starts rebooting you hold it in for about 10 to 15 seconds once you let it go everything will be okay all right so let me just show you the button right fast shy town's finest okay so if we look on the side of the TV where the plugins are right for the HDMI and all that there is an actual reset button which is right there where it says reset and you check something skinny like a ballpoint pen paper clip something like this and you actually hold it in after you plug the TV setup hold that button in okay and well this is a little bit too big but you get the idea right just um <laughs> Right. Anything like this, maybe. You just hold the button, hold the button in for about 15, 20 seconds, and then let it go, and the TV will stop recycling or rebooting. So today's video, I'm going to give you, uh, show you the problem if that button does not work okay and it still keeps rebooting okay just to verify the model number this is a model 50 r7 e okay high sense believe roku or fire tv i think it's a roku, roku tv it should say on here somewhere uh believe it's a roku tv all right which has this roku app built into the main board okay and so I want you to take the back cover off, and before we start taking the back cover off, the screws running back, I've got most of the screws taken out already, is we have to remove our two feet. And within each foot, there are two Phillips screws in each foot, all right? They're black. Do not remove the silver screw in the middle. Unfortunately, my camera won't get that low, but you get the idea. Once you look under there, there are two black screws. All right, and they look like that. So remove the feet, and then just remove the screws out of the back cover. There's one here, here, screws around here, right? And the back cover comes right up, and there is nothing connected to the back cover, no speakers or anything, and just remove the back cover. So on this TV we have just the one board with the power supply and main board built on one board. There's no T-Con, separate T-Con board. There's just um, the T-Con circuit evidently was right here and it goes right to the panel via these LDVS cables. And here is our Wi-Fi module, right? Okay, so that's how we get the Wi-Fi the, uh, the Wi-Fi uh, through the Roku app, yeah, the Wi-Fi module, okay? Like on any smart TV, you're always going to have a Wi-Fi module. And it always looks the same, always, because this is the antenna right here, this piece of wire. And so, if you're having Wi-Fi problems with your TV, it can't connect, it can't, you know, use your password, it was been, it's been working or whatever, but all of a sudden it stopped working. But you know your Wi-Fi is good because you checked other devices. Just replace the Wi-Fi module, okay? About 20 bucks. That's it. But anyway, 
as we look all right we have two swollen capacitors right there okay right here and one almost busted at the top okay those are 10 microfarad at 350 volts and the capacitors almost look like they're in the LED circuit because obviously this is our wire going to the LEDs okay that's our plug evidently going to the LEDs and I just want to check that voltage just to see okay so I'm just curious um, what the voltage is so I got my TV plugged in I've got my negative lead on anything metal on the chassis. I got my positive lead inside the red wire on the plug going to the LEDs and my meter is in DC volts okay now when the TV is off there are obviously no backlights when there's no high sense logo on the screen and we're, and we're rising it now the TV is just flashed on with the high sense the backlight just flashed on and it goes to 290 I'm sorry it goes to 90 90 volts all right so the tv flashes on with the high sense level the backlight voltage goes to 90 volts so i'm just i was just curious just checking that you don't have to you just change those capacitors but i would just like to know what the fuck is going on here okay and if i go to the white plug the white wire on that plug okay well 159 going up when the backlights flash on, okay, it goes infinite. Okay. All right, no problem. Okay, fairly simple. We just unplug everything. Unplug a power cord. Definitely make sure the TV is unplugged. Okay. First thing to do, unplug this. Unplug. This is our speakers right here. Okay. Unplug our LDVS cables going to the panel. Driver boards. Right. Okay. This is obviously our, what is this? This is for our power button at the bottom. Okay. We can see that. All right. It's for our power button at the bottom. Or our toggle button. This is going to our Wi-Fi module. Okay. Unplug this. And unplug our cable going to our LEDs. All right, looks like there's one, two, three, four, five Phillips number two screws. Board comes right up. These are our capacitors right here. One, two. Okay. And right here uh, is where those capacitors are. Okay. Okay. I just want to verify that those capacitors, it looks like these capacitors are on the cold side of the power supply where it says cold. And it looks like there's actually going, these are the, the filter capacitors for the B plus for the LEDs. So I'm going to go to the positive side of the capacitors. And these two should be connected in series. I'm sorry, parallel, right? Okay. Both of those caps are connected in parallel. I'm going to go to one of the pins on the actual LED plug. And yes, those are the capacitors for the LED plug, for the LEDs, okay? Now, I did notice when the Hisense logo came up, it was a little dim, but I'm going to change those capacitors anyway. So, just gonna heat these up. Use my little solder sucker, and you can use solder wick. Doesn't matter, or you can just heat them up and just pull them. Heat one pin up at a time and just pull it with your hand. OK. 
okay? And just remember that the orientation of these capacitors have to be correct, okay? As you can see, the shaded side with this little square, that is negative. And the other side, the just plain hole, is positive, okay? So, and these capacitors are actually... Ten microfarad. Oh, come on! Now. <laughs> Ten microfarads at three hundred and fifty volts. Okay. So, of course, I didn't have any of those in stock. Not. I got ten microfarads, but I don't have the three hundred fifty volts. Uh, so I actually had to use some from a donor board. Okay. Same thing. 300 10 microfarads at 350 volts okay let's check one of the bad ones here are the bad ones right here okay so let me see what I got okay of course, they're going to be low. That's five microfarads. Okay. The U stands for microfarad. He's actually a M. People, people have been saying on the videos, um, ten mf, but it's ten microfarads. Okay. And here's our other swollen capacitor right here. Who? And, uh-oh. Okay, when it does that, that is definitely bad. So that is our deal killer right here, pretty much. So we'll just replace them both, okay, because the other one's on the way out. Now, here is a good capacitor right here. Of course, that I swapped from another, from a donor board. So let's check this one out and see what we get. That should be close to 10, maybe 9 or 11. Yep, 10 mics. And where's my other one? Okay, that's the other capacitor. 9.2. Just say 9.2 microfarads, okay? Now, when we put these in, I know I said this once, but I have to say it again. Make sure the polarities are correct. This is negative, okay? That goes this shaded side right here. See the other side? Where the other pin is, is plain. Okay, that's always positive. This is negative, okay? Negative. Now, some capacitors may fool you. <laughs> And have this shaded side with a bunch of plus signs in it that's positive but in most cases the striped side is the negative side okay and it also shows on the board all right if you're kind of leery just look at another capacitor on the board and it is, you will see actually the negative is going to where this little shaded square is so i'm going to put these in here all right okay Get my negative there, and I have to clear this other hole. Let me just solder this one right fast while it's in the board. And what I'm going to do with this other one is I'm just going to. Put my negative and negative and just heat this other side up so it comes through the hole. Come on. 
There we go. Okay. Double check my polarity. Okay, negative side is on the bottom because if you do not, if you put those capacitors in backwards, it's either not going to work and or you are going to see some smoke. All right, you're going to damage something else. So make sure that now I'm going to install my main board back. Okay. And make sure that you do put all the screws back in because as you can see, some of these screws are grounding the board to the chassis on the actual board. For instance, right here. See there is metal, right? Okay, make sure all your plugs are free. Okay. Okay, plug everything in, LED plug, Wi-Fi module, toggle button, my left and right side of my panel. A little clip right here on the connector leave it up make sure when you go to put it push it back in make sure it's in the up position okay make sure that both of these tabs are kind of like inside the clip or inside the uh, connector okay make sure it's even that's why there's a line there see this line okay so make sure that there we go it's all the way in Okay, close it, close it, plug in my speaker, and our power cord, while I'm making sure that the other side of the power cord is not plugged in. Okay, we've got our two new capacitors installed. And on a curious note, I'm always going to check, because that is the capacitors for our B+, for the LEDs. I'm going to recheck it and see what it's supposed to be and hopefully it comes on and stays on okay got it plugged in backlights came up they are staying up and look when the backlights are up it is at 135 before when the backlights came up with the Hisense logo it went to 90 volts all right so now okay it does a little this little reboot thing it, do, it does reboot once okay uh, that's natural all right and now it's actually the backlights are actually staying on okay so we're at 140 holding it steady okay that's just my lead wiggling around okay 140 let's keep our fingers crossed check out the picture Voila, we are in good shape, guys. Good shape. Okay. Okay. Now we're going for the ultimate test of time. We're going to plug it in. Now I can see the high sense logo does look brighter. The backlight looks a little bit brighter. Right? Okay. Staying up there. Good sign. 
Now, just so you know, if you happen to do this with the capacitors, replace the capacitors, and it's still doing the same thing, still hit the button in the back. Okay, I didn't have to on this one, but that's it. All right. So, looks good. I'm going to go press home. There we go. Pandora. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. It looks like we are done. All right. So, guys, I appreciate you. Give me a like if you liked the video. Appreciate you guys for watching. And do make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Until then, I will see you guys in the next one. Big Dog out.